good morning welcome to my youtube channel so today we're going to be talking about bust caging because there's a particular um there's a particular outfit that i need to cage the bust to give the bust area structure so we're going to be doing that today so we want to start now the outfit well, okay, I, I will first cut out the neckline. This is actually a straight neckline, but it has a little dip. It has a very little dip. So I'm going to be cutting it out so that it doesn't affect our measurements for the bust caging. So this is it. Just a very little dip. Okay, so now we've gotten what we're looking for, so we now continue. We mark the middle point. I can see that I've marked the middle point of our bodies, like so. Now we'll mark the bust point. Our bust point is um our bust point is 12. So we'll mark the bust point like so. Now we'll take this measurement. We would also mark um, half inch from, as in we'll mark half inch, sorry, we'll mark one inch from the center point on each part. Like so. Now, this bust measurement that this bust um, point that you have drawn a straight line to you take it to the middle like so then you get your under bust point which is this point right get it then you curve it like so now this area, this other part of the bust point, you mark about because she has she's busty. If it was a normal um, bust, bust as in a person, someone with a normal bust, I'll just mark four inches from the other part of the bust point. But at this point, I'm marking four and a half inches. So the then you you draw a straight line to the same line to meet this one. And you do it like so. You also now draw it to meet this point, like so. So, this same thing that we're doing on this bust, we'll also do it on the next bust. At this point now, we will take it straight up. Why I'm taking it straight up? On a normal day, if it were a normal bust day, that I need a structure on the neckline. So that's why I'm taking it straight up. So I take it straight up like this. Keep allowance for turning your neckline, like a one-inch allowance, then go this way, like so. I'll now connect it down back to the boss point area. So we can see that it's taking shape. Now, we'll mark the points between the bust and the under bust. Between the bust and the under bust, which is which is four and a half inches. So, because our under bust is sixteen and a half, so which is four and a half inches. So we'll mark two and quarter, right? Then we'll take it to this point. Like so. Now, we mark the center between the bust point and where we took our half inch measurement, as in, uh, as in towards the center front. Between the bust point and the center front, we mark the middle and we take it up like so. It comes down like so. Right? So now, 
we are going to be doing this all these points now that we have measured are going to be doing it for the second boost now the second boost goes this way you draw you draw a connecting line to the second boost there's going to be a caging line here so all these lines i'm drawing are the caging lines there's going to be a caging line here then we'll now repeat same thing for the second boost just like the first like so draw your four and a half inch i mean get your four and a half inch if it were a smaller bust, I'll use four inches. But because she's um, she has a bigger bust, I'm using four and a half inches. Draw your connecting lines. This is a connecting line. This is a connecting line. Like so. Then remember I said I'm taking it up. All the way up and giving allowance for... Because I, I want a structure on the neckline. That's the reason I'm even doing the bust caging. So giving allowance for turning the neckline like so. Then the same thing, mark the midpoint between the bust and the underbust and draw a connecting line to the bust, to the center front bust point area like so. Then also mark the difference between the bust point and the center front middle and draw a straight line down like so so we can see all the caging points this is where we are going these are the points that we're going to be caging you know to get our structure the structure that we need for the outfit so now i'm going to show you how we're going to there's also going to be a Caging points in the middle, in the middle point, the midpoint. Of course, there's going to be a caging point in this midpoint. So we're going to, so we're going to be using the sewable boning, and I'll show you how to sew it. Okay, so right now we'll be sewing our um, caging points. Now, let's remember that we are using the sewable boning, of course. And then, because of that, we're supposed to use the smaller. There's a smaller sewable bone, and that one is more flexible. But we're using this because this was what I saw. Now, I know I want to do it. I'm supposed to normally people naturally face it this way, you know, follow the natural curve of the sewable bone. But I want to face it this other way. Why? Because so that when I sew it to the when I turn it, because of course, don't forget do your um caging on the lining of course you cannot do it on the fabric because the lines are supposed to be showing outside so now do your caging on the lining now why what i want to say is that if you face it this way it naturally after you turn it with your to your fabric after you turn the fabric after you turn the fabric to the lining i'll be with the, with the lining then the cup just naturally gums to the fabric as in it just gums to the bust area i'll show you what i mean so i want to start now because this um bone is not so flexible we're going to be cutting it we'll just measure the point where it's supposed to finish um sew measure the point i was supposed to sew and cut it so now i've measured this point i want to sew like this now and then i cut it remember let this bone not pass the under bust we're, we're caging just the bust area Around the bust. So we start with the midpoint. You can decide to sew the boning on both sides, you know, than sewing in the middle. You can see that it's already giving the so you can see it has already taken a natural curve 
So we continue. So you you measure this point. Normally, if 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 I wasn't going to give structure to the neckline, like I am I said, I want to give structure to the neckline. I was supposed to take this point, curve it in inwards like this, curve these two points inwards, you know, but because I need structure on this neckline, that's the reason I'm even caging the bust in the first place. So we go ahead. So we measure and ah. family. Nepal will not make someone grateful. So let's continue. So we will measure we we'll measure this point again, like I explained to you, and cut. You know it's not flexible, so you have to be cutting it to be able to achieve what you want to do. Can see how even after cutting it can see how um difficult it is to you know it's not flexible so you just have to be cutting as you're sewing So you just be doing just be doing your points just as much as you can. You cut, you measure, I cut. Measure the top. So you can see the way I put normally people put their own um, bone in the other way, but because I want it to just curve naturally, just take the natural curve of the so measure. So it's now curving naturally inward. So uh, with a little bit of ironing, we are good to go. That I left space and the armhole and the neck to turn the neckline. And I also said you can sew it on the two sides, you know, so that for proper consolidation.
So this is how we're going around and around and around. Until we're done. Remember, we're not putting any boning on any boning. This center front is not a boning. It's not a boning line. It's not, we're not going to use, we're not going to cage this one. We just use it as a, you know, reference point to get our one one inch, you know. of the neck you know the neck is supposed to stand as she has bust so it's good So we continue our cages. See how it's curving in inwards. I want it to curve inwards and outwards so that by the time we turn the fabric to the lining, we just take the natural curve. Here's our last one for this channel, for this book. So you can also do boning channels and then you can also do bust caging for corsets you know we'll, we'll do that in our next in one of our next classes you know in one of our next tutorials we'll do bust caging for corsets so in that other when you do a bust caging for corset you don't need to put a bra up basically
So we can see how it has taken a natural form, you know. This bus caging is good, it's great, especially for busty people, you know, that want to wear tube dresses. Oh, busty people that want to wear tube dresses. This is perfect for them. Perfect for them. Okay, so look at how it goes. It, has, it, it is so far. So some areas, I'm going to actually double sew some areas. So the edges of some areas that, you know, need to be sewn. Then I'll show you people how it looks. So guys, this is it. Bust caging. So now, this um, bust caging is especially good for people that have busts, you know, that are really busty and want to wear a tube dress so this naturally just takes in the bust and um you know there are, there's little or no complaints whatsoever about the bust fit and all that so now we're going to continue the dress and i'll show you how it went guys can you so put what is your dollar I why it is necessary to do boss caging, especially on tube dresses. And we also bought cake Take your time, do your dance, and do it all day long. Yeah. 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 Ye